Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? Good? Yeah, having a good unite? Excellent. That's good to know. <laughs> so I'm, I'm Russ Gamble. I'm the um, product manager for 2D at Unity. Um, and what I'd like to do in this session is talk to you about some of the new sprite rigging workflows that we've been working on and how they apply to preparing your sprite for animation. Um, but I want to find out, um, like I did in the previous talk, I'd like to know who's in the audience, um, how many coders? Show of hands. Wow. OK, cool. How many animators? Interesting. OK. Um, and how many artists? Just artists of all types. Yeah, very cool. Excellent. Any producers? Some producers? No? OK, cool. Oh, in the back. Very nice. Um, any audio guys? Some audio guys. OK. We've got to give audio some love, right? Cool. OK. So what I want to know is, what, what, what I want to get through is um, kind of a description of what the, what the concerns are around rigging, kind of explain where, how we tried to approach that, uh, the problem we were trying to solve. And then I want to, look, I want to kind of walk you through uh, the tool that we have. And that will be available in a couple of weeks. It's not available right now. Um, and it will be available via the package manager, so it's really easy to get. Um, and I'd love you to try it out when it's out, jump into the forums, and tell us what you think, right? So let's, let's, let's go. So a little bit of history. Um, so earlier this year, uh, we released 2D animation phase one. This was the first package um, that addressed this particular concern, right? And the idea was that we wanted to focus on developing tooling for rigging a sprite for skeletal animation, right? Um, so we want, to, we want to give you the tools to be able to edit bones, to be able to um, add that to a rig, to be able to put that um, in a sprite, and then influence the way uh, the sprite deforms uh, when you move those bones in the scene, okay? And the, and the real goal for phase one was Simple animated characters made of a single sprite, just one sprite. Um, and then we were going to learn from that, which we did. Uh, so thank you to all of you who tried out the first package um, and came into the forums and gave us a lot of feedback, um, told us about how this tool should work, how it should work to fit your workflows, how it should work based on your experiences in animation, um, and how it should work based on the kind of projects that you are working on, where you're going to go with it, and what, what your hopes and dreams are around that. Um, so now we have animation phase two. Um, and this is built on top of those features, built on top of the workflows that we developed uh, in phase one. And the goal here is to support multi-sprite characters. So this is if you are working in you know, your, your authoring tool, you've got multiple layers. Um, you want to be able to bring those in. And you want those layers to be respected. You want the data to do with the hierarchy of those layers, whether they're hidden or not, to be respected. Uh, and then you want to work with these multiple, these multiple sprites um, and kind of work, work them into a single rig. Uh, and make sure that you have all of the control you need um, to do all of the workflows that we, that we expect right, from sprite rigging. Um, this also led to uh, a chance to do a tighter iteration loop, which we're going to talk about. Um, and this, of course, also means that you've got workflows that support larger productions. Um, and for us, we wanted to make sure that the tool um, had a more modern UI, was more aligned with kind of these um, uh, exciting redesigns that we're looking at in Unity and to make sure that we are ready when, when that happens. OK, so what is this thing called sprite rigging, right? Um, can I get a show of hands in the audience? How many of you have worked with sprite rigging? Cool, OK. So before we get into that, typically, if you wanted to animate something um, in a 2D game, right, you've got a few kind of techniques um, that you can use, that you can try. Um, you can do a series of sprites, right? You can do flipbook. Um, you can do um, sprites in a hierarchy, right? You can do um, these kind of things, or just loose sprites, just moving them around, changing their transforms. Um, now, none of these use cases really, none of these uh, techniques really cover the use case of a kind of a soft body, a kind of a 
nicely deforming, bendy character, right? Um, and this is where sprite rigging comes in. So the idea is that you get a sprite, and you put it on a mesh, and you subdivide that mesh with enough articulation, right, with enough refinement, that you can then put a skeleton through it, change the way the bones influence that mesh, and then kind of deform it as you go. And we'll, we'll see an example of this in a minute. And typically, if you're rigging, um, you're thinking about these, this kind of iteration, this loop, right? You want to add bones, you want to edit them, you want to move them around, you want to make sure that they are, that they are the right, at the right position. Um, you want to tessellate the mesh so that those articulation points, those deformation points are where they should be, right, for your character. So it doesn't look weird when, when the face deforms, so it doesn't look weird when the arm bends the wrong way. And then you want to paint weights, right? You want to connect uh, the bones to the mesh, right? You want to make sure that uh, that relationship is uh, a flexible one that you can change. Um, and then you want to preview all of this, right? Because these are it's a bunch of different things, a lot of data working together. You want to see whether you've done the right thing. Uh, and you want to move between all of these processes uh, without hitting apply all the time, which is what our first phase was um, very much uh, that kind of modal uh, style. So what we've done is we've uh, unified um, the, the editor. We'll take a look at that. Um, and we've added some interesting uh, importing. So uh, multi-layer import. So if you have a character like this, this is typically how someone would set it up in Photoshop. You'd have different parts. Um, and then you'd somehow kind of have to bring these in, separate them out, put the pivots in the right places, um, and then reassemble it in Photoshop so that it looks about right. Um, and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of steps in between, right? So the new uh, importer uh, allows you to work with something that just looks like your character. So you paint in Photoshop the way you would. Uh, you have all the different layers where they should be. Um, and then maybe you've got some construction layers in there. Maybe you've got a reference image. Maybe you know, you've got a whole group of stuff that you don't want to be included. Um, and you would hide all of those before you, uh, before you save your file. Right? But we can work with this. We can work with all of that information. Um, and that comes into our new importer, which I'll dig into in a minute. And we'll talk about what the different options mean. Um, and then from this, we generate a sprite sheet, we auto-generate a sprite sheet, and we auto-generate a game object with children game objects, as well as later on we'll see uh, all the bones and things that you would need to be able to animate that character. So this all gets done for you now. So let's look at the parts, right? Um, I was talking about a unified um, editor. So if we look at the sprite editor window for skinning now, it's just a single module. Right, called Skinning Editor. Um, and we've broken this up into a few different tools. So we can look at the toolbar on the left. Uh, that's divided into kind of three major sections, a bone tool or skeleton tool section. Um, so here you've got your, your adding and your sp uh, splitting of bones and your editing of bones, um, things like that. We're going to go into these in a minute. Um, mesh tools. So you want to go in there and do some meshing. You want to tessellate. Um, you want to subdivide. You want to add verts. Or maybe you just want to auto-generate all of it, right? So you can get started quickly. So that's there. And then we've got weight painting. So several ways of doing that, sliders and brushes, um, both additive, subtractive. Uh, we've got a few other techniques that you can use for smoothing and things like that. Um, and then across the top, uh, we've added some, some tooling to allow you to see kind of what the sprite sheet that gets generated from this looks like, um, and some functionality for copying and pasting uh, bones or vertices or weights that you've set up. Um, we've also got a visibility panel, which is very useful when you're working with multiple sprites. Because keep in mind, you've got multiple layers, um, and there's a skeleton on top of that that's influencing those layers of sprites differently, right? based on how, how you want to set up your rig. And as before, we have a sprite skin component. Uh, this is the component that does all the work in uh, the scene. So when you drag this into the scene, we have this added to every sprite. And this is the component that builds the relationship between the bones in the scene and the sprite to allow you to do uh, the deforming that you need. OK. Cool. 
So let's spend some time in Unity, taking a look at all of this. Let's get out of the slides, right, and start to see the actual tool. Okay, so here's um, a character that I made in Photoshop. Well, I didn't make it. Um, a really cool artist that Unity did. Um, and what I want to show you is uh, that this is in Photoshop, right? Here we are. Uh, we've got all the layers that you'd expect to see. This could be more complicated, but I wanted to give you a, a slightly simpler example. Um, we've got a reference image back here that someone might have worked with. Um, we've got some other stuff in here that's hidden. Um, and everything is a individual layer, right? So it's all set up in Unity, and we're good. OK, so what you want to do is export that as a PSB, bring that into Unity. Um, and I want to spend a little bit of time looking at these settings. So when you drag it in, you get something that looks like this in the project. And I'll explain why in a minute. So this is an imported PSB right here. Um, so we do the typical sprite texture type. Um, and then we get some new stuff here. So we've got import hidden. Uh, this is typically off, right? Um, so you don't, we assume if it's hidden, you didn't want it, right? So, but you can if you've hidden some stuff and you want to bring all that in. Just check that, and then all of your hidden layers will come in. Um, we've got uh, mosaic. Um, this, is the, this is the setting that does a kind of an automatic um, sheet, right, from all of those layers. It takes all of the different layers that you brought in and then builds a, a sheet, a sprite sheet from them, right? We'll see what that looks like in a minute and how you might use it. Um, and then we want, if you want to take the character rig information, if you want to generate the character rig uh, information, you check this, which is typical here in this case, and that's why we get what we've got here. Uh, and maybe we want to use the hierarchy as well, um, because maybe we've used the layers in, unit, in uh, Photoshop to kind of mean something, right? So maybe the arms are uh, a children to the torso, maybe the hands are children to the arms, and we, wa we want to respect that. That's cool, too. Um, and then you're good to go, right? So when you do that, you get something like this, right? And this is that asset opened in the um, sprite editor. Okay, this is a sprite editor window. So what I want to do is spend most of the time here just kind of digging around, looking at how these different tools work. Okay, so the first thing I told you just now is we automatically generate a sprite shape. Uh, sorry, a sprite sheet. Gosh. Um, so if we click on this, right, we can see uh, the sprite sheet. Um, there we go. That's the sprite sheet that we generated, right? And later on, when we've got some bones and things on these different sprites, we can see which sprite in particular is being influenced by which bones, right? This is a good way of checking that out. OK, so let's start from the top. Let's look at these tools over here on the left. So these are all the new tools. And they are broken up basically into bone, mesh, and weights, OK? And we're going to dig through them one by one. So the top one is what we call preview pose, right? Uh, and this is a very important, um, this is very important for, for riggers, right? Because you do want to see where you're at, right? How you're doing um, at any point. So this character has already been set up. I'm going to show you what you would be able to do um, if you had already rigged the character and you need to see if you've done the deformations correctly. So we'll grab this bone, and you can see. This thing up here is a single uh, sprite, right? And what we're seeing is we're seeing how these bones here um, influence it. And what you can do is you can keep moving these bones to maybe you, you want to do something really uh, wicked like that and just see if the extents are correct, right? If everything is, is doing what it's supposed to do. Um, while it's deformed like this, you can do some painting and you can do some editing, uh, which is useful if you want to see, you want to kind of go into an extreme mode and make sure that the weighting is set up correctly for that, and then go to another kind of extreme and make sure that the extents of motion are correct. Um, but you can get, you know, all messed up and get the bones all over the place, so you might want to restore the bind pose, which is up here. So we'll click on that and it brings you back to your bind pose. So then you can keep going. OK, 
Next thing I want to look at is the uh, edit pose. So this is slightly different, um, but it allows the manipulation of existing bones um, with the focus being here on the orientation of those bones. So if you look at what happens when I click a bone, I can click on a bone, I can disconnect it from its uh, hierarchy because you may want to do that in some cases. Uh, but the more typical thing you're going to be doing here is moving the joints, right? So you can actually go in there and tweak the joints uh, and get them to be in the right position. Cool. And then you'll need to do a repaint of the weights just to make sure the influence is in the right place. But as we'll see later, that's quite easy to do. OK, so I'm going to do a revert because I'm making all sorts of changes here. Um, next tool I want to look at is creating bones. So typically what you'd start with is, is an empty character, right? There wouldn't be any of this stuff. Um, so then you would come in here and you'd go, OK, I want to create bones. And to create bones, you simply click. Right? All I'm doing here is clicking, and you can just create bones, right? And if you choose one of these bones and then you continue clicking, um, you can't quite see it here because I've done it in a, in a strange part of the uh, editor, but there we go. We can see we've got a parent link there. So you can just choose any bone that you want to be a parent and then keep going, right? So you can set up rigs quite easily. Um, so that's how we clicked out this character quite, quite quickly. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, sometimes you're done with all of your, with all of your rigging, where you're done with the bones, right? the skeleton, and you don't have the right number of bones, or you, maybe you missed out something, or you want to put a little bit more articulation. Maybe you thought just one bone all the way through the arm into the hand was enough, but you want to add a wrist bend, right? So you can go in here, and uh, you can split those bones up. So next up is the split tool, and that works as you would expect. You bring your tool over an existing bone, click on that, and it also has joint movement built in, so you can just come in there and then do a little refinement step immediately after you've split the bones. Cool. OK, and then there's the reparenting tool. So this is one of the first ones that shows a proper inspector. Uh, so I'm going to bring up this idea of an inspector. Um, if you are in one of these modes where you can select a bone, you may notice at the bottom right of the Sprite Editor window, these little inspectors start to show up. So when you select a bone, you can see the name of the bone and the bone depth. More on bone depth later. Um, but if you want to see how everything comes together, what is the actual structure, the hierarchy of all of this stuff, you can go to the bone reparent, and you can see this, right? Which is this little inspector that shows you how all of this stuff comes together. Um, and in here, you can turn things on and off. You can come into the bones. Um, I'm going to try this. Let's say I wanted to make the hat a child of spine two. I can just grab that, move it over there, and now we've changed the parenting, right? Without doing any dragging necessarily in the scene, we can just change the parenting. I want to put that back. OK. Um, maybe I want to uh, turn some stuff on and off. I can turn some bones on and off. Um, let's turn all of them off, right? We still see the parent links, though. Um, we'll probably correct that in the future. Uh, maybe I want to change just this sub uh, set here, just all of the children of hat, right? So that I don't have all of these bones in my way while I'm trying to do some work. Okay, and more on visibility later. But this is the reparenting tool with a little bit of extra uh, functionality because if you're doing this, you may want to uh, rename or change visibility. And you can rename all of these bones as well right in here. Cool. OK, so that's the bone tools, right? It's a, quite a, a good set of tools, I think, to get you going with some, with some skeleton creation. Uh, next up, let's look at this geometry that we've been seeing on these sprites. Where did that come from, and what can I, how can I get some control over it, right? So let's take a look. So if you don't select anything, you kind of see the geometry on all of these sprites. And these get generated. Um, I'll show you a tool that can generate them for you, or you can click them out yourself. Um, and you want this geometry, you want this kind of subdivision, uh, so that you can deform your sprites correctly. OK, so let's start with um, the first tool here, which is Edit Geometry. So when you have a sprite selected, 
and um, you zoom in on that, you can come in here and you can just edit all of this geometry. You can move all the stuff around. This stuff got auto-generated. I'll show you how to do that later. Um, but this is all, you know, you can do some tweaking. We're not actually adding anything new here. We we're just changing what, what was generated by default. So let's say that we do want to uh, come in there and we want to make some changes. So the first tool here is uh, Create Vertex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make a line uh, that follows this hat uh, brim here. I want, I want to make sure that I have an articulation line there because I may want to change the way that works. Right? So I'm going to come in here and click a vertex down. And as you can see, I'm slowly starting to get a line. It's not a very good one. My art director is not going to be very happy with me, but never mind. There we go. So now I have a line that goes from here to here. Right? And that's, that's better. Because I may want to put a bone in there that influences one end. Um, and I, I want to make sure that there's a border in between, right? Um, so next up, um, I want to make an edge, right? So I'm going to use the edge tool um, to try and create edges. Uh, and the way I want to do that is I want to click from vert to vert. And this is an edge that I define so that even if I'm doing other kinds of automatic meshing, this edge will stay there, right? So what I really wanted to do there was use the, uh, the vertex line that I created earlier and kind of go, yeah, something like this, like this. Um, start from here and kind of slowly click out a well-defined edge, right? And then this will not be affected by other vertex uh, adding operations later on. This will be respected. This is like a hard edge. Cool. So as you can see, we've got like uh, a good set of 2D meshing tools here. OK, next up, uh, splitting of edges. So the reason I made this edge is I wanted to show you how I can refine it. And you can only refine edges that you have defined yourself like this. So I want to go into any edge, and I want to add more vertices like that. Um, and there we go. I can get a little bit more definition. I don't know what my plans are for this hat, but I seem to be quite ambitious. Um, so maybe, maybe revert. <laughs> We've gone too far. OK. Um, and then finally, what I wanted to dig into here with the geometry uh, editing is that you don't have to click any of this stuff out yourself at all. right? You can actually set up um, automatically. So we've got this character here. Uh, the rainbow colors you're seeing there is because there's already weights on this. But let's focus on the, on the mesh. And let's look at this tool here. This is the last of the geometry tools right at the bottom. And it's called Generate Geometry. And if we have a little zoom in here and we look at the inspector for this, um, you can do um, automatic generation based on outline um, detail, based on alpha. Um, and how much kind of subdivision you want going on, right? So let's take a look at what happens if I turn subdivide down really low, and I click on Generate Selected Sprite. Right, so we get a really low res thing. So maybe you're playing with trade-offs, right, in, in the game. You want to make sure that you have mm, just enough poly count, right, um, to create the deformations that you need. But yeah, so you want to start somewhere low, and then you really want to go in one by one and be very particular about which vertices you want to use. So you could start somewhere there. right? But you wouldn't need to click it out yourself. You can get going quickly. If you don't have any sprites selected, and you're like this, you can click Generate All Sprites. And then we wait for a progress bar, but not too long. It's a pretty fast process. And then we've generated the meshing for all of those sprites. So that's pretty cool. right? And then you can get, you can get started going in and start refining uh, how those weights work. Um, I'm going to do one more revert. OK. Now, you've noticed all of these things, all of these changes I've made. I've clicked revert a couple of times, but I have not hit apply. Um, so this is what I wanted to mention. This is a unified workflow, right? We're basically moving between mesh editing, bone editing. So I can tessellate my mesh. I can put the bones up against the tessellation, where the lines that I've defined correctly. Um, and then later on, I can go in and paint weights. And at no point have I, do I have to hit apply to, to see the, the result, because I can always go to preview and kind of see whether I've got things where I want them to be. 
So that, that was a very important uh, driver for us to make sure that happened because uh, we want to make sure that uh, animators, that riggers are in the zone, right? That, they are, that you're not uh, having to leave a particular mode. Okay, last up, uh, let's look at weights. So the weight painter or the, or the weight settings uh, down here. Uh, so there's a few ways that you can paint weights. So let's bring these two together so you can see what I'm doing. Um, we can do, uh, no, let's do it up here. Yeah. Okay, so we can do uh, sliders, right? So if we look at um, how this works, we can change some slide, uh, we can change some values via sliders, or we can change them with a brush. Okay, so let's start with the sliders. So with this tool selected, I can come in here and I can select, multi select a bunch of verts. Um, there we go. So this part of the head. Um, and maybe I want to do something where I come over here and I select this bone, and for some reason I want this bone to influence these verts here. So then I can just come in here and I can change, hang on, I don't have influence from that bone, so I can't do that. Um, but I can change how um, this bone is influencing these verts, or I can change how this bone influences these verts. Um, so we can see here there's a bunch of different bones influencing these verts right now, so maybe I'll just go to this one. Okay, cool. So I want hat zero one to influence these, um, and I can put the amount here, right, or I can turn it down. Um, and then once we've got all of that set up, we'll actually have a bunch of vertex weights here that we can balance and normalize. Um, this, is, uh, this is an example of at least control with one slider, right? Um, I want you to notice that there are different modes here. We're basically adding and subtracting. Um, so that doesn't necessarily respect weights that already exist. We'll just plow through them and just add or subtract. Um, the next one is kind of interesting, grow or shrink. If there's already weights on those vertices, we'll grow up to those, um, where those weights are, but we won't override the weights that are already there. I'll show you an example of that in painting. Uh, and then smoothing, which is a very common thing. You want to kind of set up the influences between maybe um, across the boundary of two bones that are influencing a bunch of verts, and you want to smooth the influences across there. So we'll take a look at all of those. Um, that's probably easier seen down here. So we will look at this leg. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is um, change. So let's, sorry, we're going to look at painting. Uh, let's go over to the painting tools. Um, so I'm going to change the brush, make it a little bit bigger. Let's go like 100 units. Um, so you can see this is a brush. Uh, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be painting the influence of this bone over these verts, right? So I've got this bone selected, and I can just go in there and start painting influence, right? So that bone is now completely influencing this leg. How do I know? Well, I can do preview, right? So without leaving this mode, I, I can see that this is in control of everything. OK, so I'm going to revert that. I don't want that. Go back in there again. Um, and let's see what happens if I kind of split the influence between two bones. Uh, let's select that guy. And let's go add, subtract, uh, increase the size again. And then let's do some painting. Oops, nope, not like that. Uh, OK, and then we'll get this bone here, and we'll do that, right? We're ignoring that bone in the middle, I know. Sorry. And then what I want to do is change the mode here to smooth, so you can see what we can do with this middle section. Um, and you can see we've smoothed out those weights quite nicely. Yeah. So now you can imagine that that boundary between the way those two bones influence that series of verts is completely smooth. Um, OK. Let's look at this last one down here. Uh, this is auto-generate weights, right? So what I wanted to do was correct all of this stuff that I've been doing here. I remove the influence of this bone. That's not very cool. Um, what I want to do is I want to generate all of the weights that would influence this particular sprite um, and just do this. So I've got the sprite. I've got these bones that are associated with the sprite. And I'm going to hit generate, right? And we're done. So you can actually go through the process of just 
generating uh, vertices, right? Generating meshes. And then you can do one more step after that of uh, generating weights. Or if you looked again carefully at the uh, generation um, panel for geometry, you'll notice that there was a weights checkbox. So you can actually just generate weights and geometry all at once. And if you've got the bones in place, it's almost a single step process, right, to get going. So that's pretty cool. Um, the last one I want to show you is the bone influencers uh, panel here. So what we're looking at here is, because again, we're in multi-sprite, so it can be a little bit um, confusing when you see overlapping sprites. And you want to know which bones are, are influencing which sprites. So if I double click on these, I can see over here that we've got right leg 0, 1, and 2 influencing the right leg, so we're in a good place, and this is correct, right? But what's typical is that you may see something like this uh, when you first uh, start doing this rigging, when you first start doing a, a, an association of bones. And so you might want to do, you might want to go through all of the bones and make sure that there's no strange um, kind of um, imposters, right, sitting in your sprite uh, trying to influence the bones. Because when you do your, when you do your uh, weight painting and all that, this bone will have some influence. Okay, so then you can just add and remove bones quite easily here uh, by selecting them uh, and adding them, or by selecting them in this list and removing them. Cool. Okay, so we've looked at meshing, we've looked at painting, we've looked at um, the, uh, the um, uh, what am I thinking of here? Uh, the geometry, we've looked at bone creation, and we've looked at weight painting. Now, while you're working on all of this, um, we have these tools up here in a visibility uh, panel that allow you to kind of filter all of this work, all of this stuff that you're working with, right? So maybe you're working with those bones like we saw earlier in the reparenting tool, and you want to turn off some of them. So in this case, I want to turn off the, the right leg, and I want to turn off the left leg, and I just want to focus on everything else that I'm working on. Um, but we also have visibility tools for the sprites, right? So if you want to come in and you just want to work on the head, you can just go head, right? So I've held down uh, alternate while I did that so that everything else gets kind of um, disabled. And then I go to the bones here, and I can just turn off everything that I don't need, um, and then just dig into the spine here and turn the head stuff back on, right? So then you can really focus in get the different parts working correctly, and then show everything again, and everything will work together quite nicely. Um, you can also, there's a bunch of um, ways of filtering this view as well. Um, just to make sure everyone's aware, we have um, all of these typical search uh, things that you'd see. So if you want to find all your hat bones, that's fine. Just type in hat, and they show up. So that's kind of nice. Cool. OK, so that's the rigging, right? That's all of the stuff happening in a single tool. You've done all of, your, all of your stuff, all of your rigging, all of your bones are in the right place, the meshes are done, and then you want to hit Apply. Done. And how do we get this into the scene? Well, we go to the scene view, and we hide the one that's already there. <laughs> and then we get the, um, we get the uh, thing that was generated. And I wanted to talk about this a little bit. So you can see this is a prefab that gets generated, and it has a bunch of nested prefabs within it um, that have all of that information. And every one of those represents one of those layers that you had in Photoshop. So you're going to get a game object per layer. Um, and then each of those will, be, uh, will, will add a sprite skin component to it. So you have controls over each of those individually. Okay? So I'm going to drag that into the scene. Done. Right? And then all of that work that you did with the bones, it's all just sitting there. We can open this up, and we can see that on each of these, we have a sprite skin. Right? Each of these has a sprite skin, and we can just go in there, and we can see, for example, the left leg bone here. These are all the spines. This is the hat. And you can just click on this in the scene, and you're off. Cool. Um, so I'm going to turn this one off. The previous uh, character had a little bit of animation on her. Um, so I'm just going to show you what that looks like. OK, so not the best animation, not award winning, but I think you get the idea. Um, so what we've got here is a multi-sprite character with uh, rigging through each of the sprites. 
Um, if you look at that, there's something interesting going on with the hat there. That is a single sprite, and it's actually rendering behind itself. Um, there's parts of it that are rendering behind them. And I mentioned earlier that there was a bone depth setting that you see in your rigging. So if you set your bone depth, it's basically the sorting, uh, the rendering sort order um, for those bones. So if you have a bone depth that is lower, it's going to be rendered behind, and higher is going to be rendered forward. And you're going to get the ability to kind of uh, render sprites behind themselves, even if they're not multiple. Um, the amulet here is a different sprite, right? So we can offset the pivot. We can do what we want to do there. Um, maybe you want to drive it in other ways. This is just driven using keyframes. Um, but that's what it is. Um, so we've gone through all the steps, and we drag it into the scene, and you're done. Cool. So that was sprite rigging. Um, so I just want to make sure that everyone's aware of what you can do. So we're not out yet. We're about two weeks uh, from, from, from release for, uh, for, the, for this phase, right? Um, we're looking at a, a release in sometime in 2019, um, towards the early part of 2019. Um, what we would love, because it was very useful to us for the first phase, and it helped us build a tool that was more aligned with what you needed, um, please try this out. Um, if, if you can, I'm, and I always make the disclaimer, these are not production ready. Um, so please use them carefully, but please use them. Uh, and then tell us how they fit into your workflows, what have we missed, um, kind of what works, right? It's always nice to know that. What doesn't? Um, what have we missed? And then jump into the forums, right? Have a discussion with us. We very often uh, reach out directly to a lot of the people in the forums who are giving us very interesting feedback. Um, and we'll give you a chance to try out some of the tools, uh, some of the changes that we've made to those tools. Uh, a lot of the work now has moved into this uh, packages kind of way of doing things. And that's a good thing, because that means that we can work a lot faster. We can adapt to a lot of the changes that we're getting from the feedback uh, that we get. Um, your projects guide us. Please remember that. We want to know what you're building, how you're building it. And um, we want to make sure that we keep on supporting that. And of course, um, as I always say, keep making amazing 2D games in Unity. Um, it's what we want. It's what you want. Uh, keep it up. It's awesome. Uh, one more thing. Uh, we've launched a Unity 2D challenge. So if you saw the keynote, you may have seen uh, this mentioned. Uh, show the world what you can do with 2D, right? So we've got all this cool stuff out there, uh, all these different preview packages. There's a lot of new features. There are a few different uh, kind of categories that you can build towards. Um, Eduardo, am I right? It's a $4,000 cash prize. $4,000 cash prize. That's not bad, right? To just play around with a bit of 2D, show us what you got. Um, thank you. <laughs>